In the last video, we set up our stream builder to actually show this value here, which is related to what's in the bank on the user's account. But when we actually ask a question, it doesn't do anything and it doesn't deduct from that bank. So that's what we're going to set up right now. So we're going to do this right here in the answer question function. And this is called whenever that ask button is clicked. So currently we're updating Firebase with the question and the answer, but we're also going to now update the user's account. So we can access the account with widget.account. And we're going to just set that bank value to a minus equal one. So it'll just subtract one decision from the bank. And you can see we're actually getting an error here. And the reason for that is potentially the bank could be null. And since we have null safety on now, it is throwing that error there. We're going to actually make it so the bank value just has a default value. So in the account model over here, let's just set the default of the bank to be zero and make this no longer be able to be null. So now this should work with the widget bank account being subtracted by one, but that's not enough. We actually need to also make a call to Firestore to update this. So similar to what we have down here, we're going to make another call, but we're only going to be updating this document here. So we can actually just copy this whole piece here. We'll make this call below. We can do, I suppose that whole call and then we can do this whole stuff down here to update the document. So once we have that document, we're going to just call update on it. And the update here will take that key value pair of all our parameters, which in the account model, we actually already created that to JSON and currently it will just have the bank in it. So to use that, we can just call widget dot account dot to json and if you save this and now ask a question you should notice this three is decreased to two which as you can see that worked a few things we can do now to update this firstly you'll see we're using provider here to get this uid but in our account model we also have the uid and we are saving that uid there so while this is fine and there's no real reason to change this, you can also use widget.account.uid and get the UID that way. And since this function also has that same access, we can do the same thing here. It's just personal preference. This is a little bit cleaner in my opinion than going through that provider, but you might not always have this option to get the UID from, from the object you're dealing with. So that's good there. And now when we have this decision here and we get down to our zero decision, we don't want this to go negative. We actually wanna check when this gets to zero and then actually not allow the user to ask another question. So we're gonna start setting that up right now and we'll finish it in the next video. But what we're going to do is actually start tracking when the user should receive their next question. And we'll do this every time that the user asks a question. So every time we'll just update it and say in eight hours from now, you can ask in eight hours from now, you can get your next free question. But if they already have questions, it won't matter. The timer will just update and we won't really use it, but we will always be updating it. So we're going to update our account model here to actually store that, that date value. So this will be a date time and we're going to call this the next free question. And we're just going to want to add this into our Firebase getting and setting. All right, that looks good. But we will make this nullable. So add the question mark there. And that looks good. So now back in our update here, when we're updating the account, we're going to actually set that value. So set next free question. And we're going to set that equal to the date time dot now and add a duration to it. So we can add a duration here by calling add and then duration. And for the sake of our test, I'm just going to set this equal to five seconds. So for right now, I'm just going to set this equal to five seconds. So while testing, we can get kind of a quicker new free decision, but in the production version, I'm going to be setting this to three hours. So basically after 
a user uses all their decisions after three hours, they'll get one free new decision. But if we save this and ask another question, all right, so we are getting an error here and the error is actually in our account model and where we're calling next free question from snapshot, Firebase is going to return a timestamp and we need to convert that to a date time. So this is pretty simple. We just need to add a to date here. And we can actually add a question mark before this because not every snapshot is going to have a date time. So if it does, then we will. If it does, then we will convert it to a date. And if not, we just won't even do anything. So if we rerun the app now, you'll see that question did go through and that means our Firebase update should have gone through. But let's go ahead and just ask one more. And you can see that goes to zero. And you can see actually our timestamp was also updated. So this time here is actually five seconds from when we hit that button, which is basically the current time right now. So this is good and we are saving this data how we would like. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually hide all this stuff once we are down to zero and actually show a countdown timer and give that next free question once the countdown has reached zero. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's gonna be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube for free are gonna be that base app, and this is part of that. But if you wanna see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com slash monetize, and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.